So we've done a bunch of videos on this channel. I think we're up to 80 or 90 videos. And today we're gonna to do our first lounge session. And what's about a lounge session? Let's see, we've got our iced coffee. I'm recording this in the morning. I've still got my lounge pants on. And today we're gonna to talk about how I'm convinced that Tannoy, the backbone of legacy speakers, Tannoy is dead. Guys, thanks for joining me for our first lounge session. I'm all excited to be in my, my lounge pants here. And there's been a topic lately that has really been on my mind. When I have a new topic or a new idea, it, I, I go into OCD mode. and Man, I obsess about it. I'm going to have some videos coming up. As some of you know, I have uh, switched my main reference speakers from Klipsch La Scala speakers to some very beautiful, fine audio speakers. And before we do that, I've got a bunch of new gear over my shoulder here everywhere. Why don't we take a quick pause and let me show you the latest update on gear, what's coming, what we have, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so that's the, the latest gear that we have. Lots of exciting, coming, exciting stuff coming up, but let me get back to my original point. I'm not doing this as clickbait. I'm not coming across with a really, you know, crazy title to try and get people to watch. I've come to this realization that is my personal belief. I can't prove this. I really hope I'm wrong. Uh, Tanoi has been such a monumental uh, presence in, in high-end audio and hi-fi audio. And I, I really hope I'm wrong on this and I hope they make an amazing turnaround. But let me tell you what, what led to this uh, personal belief. When I started searching for new speakers, my issue was I needed something that could really pressurize the room. I was also having some uh, time delay issues in the room with different drivers and it led me to Tanoi. In starting to do the research, Tenoy was uh, bought 2016, 2017 by the company that owns uh, Behringer. And to great fanfare, they said, don't worry, Tenoy, which has been made in the United Kingdom and Scotland, they got a factory there for decades and decades and decades, not going anywhere. Well, let me show you some of these articles. I'm gonna read from it, but I'm also gonna post it on the screen. This is dated. December 23rd, 2016, and the source is What Hi Fi. It says Parent Company Music Group, that's a company that owns Tenoy, says that the union suggestions that it has reneged on plans to keep some speaker production in Scotland is incorrect. It goes on to say that the quote, the statement, this is from the music group, the statement from the union is incorrect. Nothing has changed our plans to keep the production of our high end speakers in Scotland. Well, when they talk to the, uh, then it goes on to say, however, GMB Scotland says senior manager at Tannoy's Scottish plant in Coatbridge have been put on gardening leave. I'm guessing that's a British term. And they've had their emails blocked while they've been urged to sign redundancy deals by the 13th of January ahead of the plant's proposed closure in March, 2017. So when I go to buy a speaker, I, I wanna know 
the history about it. I want to know that I'm buying something that is uh, got some some heft behind it in terms of legacy, that it's going to be around a while. It's it's got good pedigree. There are a lot of great brands out there that are produced in people's, for lack of a better word, basement. Amazing products. That's not the stuff that I personally want to uh, own or or really talk about. I've got I love boutique brands. I love less popular brands. I'm okay with small brands that that have uh, that are are made in you know individual batches. Love that stuff. But by the same token, I want to know that the brand's been around for a while. So I really started to get interested in Tanoys, and the more I researched these. Because let's be honest, Kevin at Upscale Audio, I believe he's the U.S. distributor. He is, uh, he's produced some great videos talking about him. Yeah, he, he's a great salesman. He knows a lot about audio. He got me really excited about him. And the more I researched it, though, things weren't lining up between what the public persona of Tannoy was, still built in Scotland, and what I was uncovering. People on forums were talking about that their, their dealers were talking that they were trying to get a whole bunch of stock because they didn't know what was going to be uh, made where. They closed the Scotland factory. There was never any mention from Tannoy about where stuff is being produced. They refused to answer that. They have not opened up any production plant that I could uncover anywhere on anything on the web as to where they were being produced. So my logic tells me if you close the plant that it was being produced at, and the only other manufacturing facilities that you're known to have are in China, and you won't tell us where it's being made, it's probably made in China. Now, there's nothing wrong with stuff made in China. But Tanoi is a UK brand, historically, it's been made in the UK. And frankly, I'm not gonna pay prices of the Tanoi stuff for stuff that is made in China. That's my personal preference. There's too many stuff that too much stuff that isn't made uh, there that is made in other countries that I feel has got a better lock on quality control and things of that nature that I personally choose to support. Again, I'm not ch- knocking China, so so don't tell me that I am. But Tanoi has not been honest from what I could see with what was going on. It goes on to say now I'm looking at May 2016th, May 6, 2016, BBC. The music group, again, the company that owns Tanoi, confirms Tanoi plant closure plans. And it goes on and on and on about they're closing it, but they won't tell us where they're being made. But they still want people to believe things are made in the UK. Now, at best, I've been able to uncover that some of the higher end cabinets are made in Europe. Well, big deal. I don't care where the cabinet is made. I want to know where the drivers are made and and, and the parts on that. And... If you're not going to tell me, what are you hiding? If you really believe that your manufacturing facility in China is that great and you got no issues with it and you're proud of it, that's awesome. Own it. But don't try and not answer the questions that people have. And I want to know what the product is and where I'm buying. So then what really got me thinking is that there was a Facebook post the other day Actually, November 20th at 5.15 a.m. This is what Tanoi posts. Now, I will tell you that from business school backgrounds, this post reads to me as a company that has nothing that they have to say that they want to say. And instead, it's filled with a lot of fluff that tells you absolutely nothing and just filled with a lot of words. Let me read this to you. I'll put it up on the screen and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. In a strategic move, I'm reading the Tannoy press release here. In a strategic move signaling a renewed commitment. Well, geez, that only took you, what, seven years since you bought the company? To innovation and market relevance, Tannoy, a pioneer in high fidelity sound, welcomes, uh, forgive me, I I don't want to mispronounce his name, but uh, Sarin O'Toole as its brand new CEO. Established, it goes on to talk about uh, uh, when it was established, 1926. And then it says, O'Toole's appointment marks a significant milestone for Tanoi. He uh, storied career in music, media, and technology, highlighted by executive leadership roles and disruptive initiatives. 
in the music, media, and finance sectors. Disruptive. Oh, that's a big word. Now, by the way, I study disruptive technologies. I know what disruptive technologies are. It's a word that many people like to use when it not, in fact, it's not disruptive, but they just like to put in big words. And it aligns seamlessly with Tannoy's vision. Okay, well, let's recap what Tannoy's vision has been for the last seven years that I see as a potential consumer from what I can derive on the web based on mostly their lack of saying anything, their complete radio silence. They won't tell you where it's made. They close down the Scotland plant. They tell you it's gonna be made in the UK. They won't tell us where it's made. Nobody knows of a plant in the UK where it's being made. So we can only surmise it's being made in Scot uh, China. And we've had seven years of radio silence from Tanoi. Guys, I wanna, I wanna take a step back here. I am not picking on Tanoi. I want the best for Tanoi. That we, this industry is a much better industry with Tanoi in it. I really feel like Tanoi is so dropping the ball on this that this is a, a tough love in hopes that somebody there will wake up and write this shit before it goes down a path they can't come back from. Because there are a lot of people, myself included, who are ready to pull the trigger and purchase Tanoi's that have not because of what they're doing and how they're doing it. So let me go on. And then he goes on about how it's an honor to lead such a brand with such notable history. And he's about bringing the artist's voice to, love, to life and will take bold steps to ensure our legacy continue to resonate in the future. Well, how about a simple step? How about just telling us where it's made, telling us that the dealer's freaking out that they can't get any more inventory or that there's any supply of inventory coming up is, is not going to be an issue so that you can do basic 101 business. Then you can focus on the bold stuff. But in the interim, how about focusing on the basic stuff? Then it goes, and this is, this is very interesting business speak. Tanoi's expansion plans include a significant recruitment drive in the UK, headquartered in Manche Manchester, inviting top talent to contribute to a brand that has snapped at the sound of generations. And the, the, the plant that they have there is more of my understanding, from what I can find out, is more of a design plant, is more of a, a leadership. It's not a manufacturing. So again, they're still not answering the manufacturing. And then it goes on to say, the vision for Tanoi is clear to navigate the brand through a landscape of technological advancements while staying true to the essence that has made Tanoi a household name. Uh, and then there is a bunch of comments. Some of them miss state that Tanoi is still made in the UK when it's not. Uh, in fact, I posted on there and I said, well, can you give me an address as to where it's manufactured in the UK? Just because everything I'm showing, BBC, What Hi-Fi is, they've closed down the plant. In fact, I think they made uh, condominiums. They raised the plant and they put condominiums on it, if, if I'm not mistaken. Just give me an address. Just, just tell me where it's made in the UK. Here's an idea. If it's made in Europe like you claim it is, tell me where in Europe. I don't even need a street address. Just tell me what country. And here's the thing, guys. They're playing games. Just be honest. Just tell us. And that was the one thing that I saw in a lot of forums that, that customers have always commented how terrible Tanoi is in communicating with the customer. And I don't think that's fair, especially where some of these speakers are 30, 40, $50,000. Yeah, I expect a response. I expect the company to be there. Let me compare and contrast that with the Antipodes audio server here that I have that I'm going to be doing a review on. They are the quintessential uh, tip of the pyramid shining example of a company that is committed, absolutely committed to customer support, customer responsiveness. You look at the forums that they're on. Anybody's got a technical question, they answer it immediately. They will even log into your unit to help you with issues to get it running. Guys, that's, that's extreme in such a positive way. That's amazing. That's what this hobby needs. I'm not suggesting that Tanoi needs to send somebody to your house to hook up your speakers. I'm suggesting that Tanoi needs to at least have a communication channel with its customers, with the industry, with the people who cover the industry, with its dealers to let us know what's going on. Tanoi, I didn't buy your speakers because of this. You, you, you really took somebody who was ready to spend the money and you made it so that they didn't. 
you have lost so much ground with all this bad PR because it's tough to get customers back. It's really difficult to earn a customer, but once you earn a customer, when you lose the customer, it's almost impossible to get them back. There are scores of people talking about how they went with cash in hand to buy your speakers and they didn't. I'm one of them. What did I end up with? I ended up with fine audio. And why fine audio? Because the top heads from Tanoi, from a development point of view, from an engineering point of view, left Tanoi right around that time frame. And they developed new technologies. They are not carbon copy Tanoi technologies. They are next generation, different designs that have moved the needle forward where Tanoi has not had any real progress in terms of uh, moving that needle forward for several decades. They move the needle forward. They are genuinely made in the United Kingdom and Scotland. Now the lower price stuff is made in China. They tell you that. There's no, that, that's legit, that's fair. I got no problem with that. I just wanna know where this stuff is made because I just want to know a company stands by what it does. If you really believe China is the way you, you want it manufactured, that's great, just stand by it, just let me know. The higher end stuff is made in the United Kingdom. This, this speaker is gorgeous. And you know what? There's no Tanoi in my future. And it, it breaks my heart to say that. Tanoi makes, uh, the, the, I think, beautiful speakers. They're leg legendary speakers. But Tanoi, you dropped the ball and you don't seem to be listening and you just don't seem to care. And if a company is that deaf and doesn't care that much, again, these are my own personal opinions. I am not picking on Tanoi. I want you guys to wake up and I want you guys to turn this around while you still can. I want the best for you. This industry is better with you in it. But stop shooting yourselves in the foot. So guys, that wraps up the first, the first lounge session. I don't know, it's kind of fun. I'm still in my lounge pants. I, I, iced coffee, I went through that whole thing without drinking. Leave your comments below. Tell me what your thoughts are. Do you own Tanoi? Have you listened to Tanoi? What have you heard about what they're doing, what they're not? Do you agree or disagree with anything I've said? Again, these are my own personal opinions. In no way am I putting down Tanoi. I really want Tanoi to succeed but they won't even respond to any comments on their own Facebook posts. As recent as a couple of days ago. So that just tells me they don't care. And that's a real shame.